So today we're going to talk about radical equations. A radical equation is an equation that includes a radical. You know it's an equation because it has an equal sign, and then the radical symbol tells you that it's a radical equation. Okay? So a couple of things I want to talk about first. I've seen a lot of students mess up at the very first step of problems, especially in a problem that maybe it only has an x on one side of the equation, is a lot of students will ignore that side of the equation and put an equal zero over here and then solve it down, making it a much simpler equation. So what I want to tell you and make sure you are aware of is that in your problem, no matter what type of problem, you should not be adding equal signs into your equations. If your original question does not have an equal sign, don't put one. You're just changing the problem, making more work for yourself. If you have to put an equal sign over here, then you shouldn't have an equal sign. You should never have to make an additional equal sign. If there's one in the middle, keep it in the middle, meaning keep whatever's on the other side there. Don't change or lose parts of your problem. Okay. The other thing I want to say is when you're doing a radical equation, the first thing I want you to do is to identify what is the actual part of the radical symbol and what is just other parts of the equation. So our radical symbol contains all of this. If there is number in front, that would not be contained by a radical symbol. And if there is anything being added or subtracted to the end, that again would not be contained by our radical symbol. The reason why we want to specify what is our radical symbol, what's contained by it, is because if there is anything outside, ideally you want to move it all to the other side of the equation. The number up front, you can live with it staying on the same side, but anything on the, other, on the outside over here being added, subtracted to the radical symbol, you want that to move to the other side of the equation. Otherwise, it's not going to work correctly. You're going to do a whole lot of work for something that's not going to work well. Okay. So do we have nothing being added or subtracted here? We're just going to work it down with the radical symbol. So first, make sure nothing is outside the radical. on that side of the equal sign. The radical symbol can be on the left or the right, it doesn't matter. Just from the equal sign on that side, you want ideally only the radical symbol in the inside. Again, you can have a number up front in front of it, it's just going to complicate things a little bit. You can get rid of it evenly, get rid of it evenly to make your life easier. Okay. So then we're going to take our problem. Since there's nothing outside, we don't have to worry about that. And we're going to try to get rid of the radical. So we have to identify our index. Remember, your index is the number that is inside of the radical telling you what type of root it is. Since this is a square root, our index is 2. Remember, anytime the index isn't written, you're going to assume it's a 2. We write the 3 for cubed roots, we write the 4 for fourth roots, etc, etc. Square roots are the only ones we don't write because they are our most common. So it's like we don't write over 1s or exponent of 1s. We don't write the index of 2s. Okay. So you're going to take whatever your index is and you're going to make it into an exponent so that it reduces away your radical. The square root of something squared is the radicand, correct? However, we have that rule, what you do to one side, you must do to the other. I want to specify on this rule, you are doing it to both sides, not to every single term. So we squared the right-hand side. You need to square the left-hand side, and by that, the entire side, don't square the x and square the 4, that's squaring the terms. Square the whole side, so you must have parentheses. That's going to give you x minus 4, x minus 4. And that will be equal to just your radicand. Okay. 
If you have multiple pieces on the opposite side of your radical symbol, you will have to foil, distribute, however you think about it. If you have multiple pieces, you have to foil. If you don't, it will automatically be wrong. If we'd have put x squared minus 16, it would have been wrong. So once we foil this, we get x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 16, careful with sign numbers, that's x squared minus 8x plus 16. Don't forget your other sign, 28 minus 4x. Now anytime you're solving an equation, again equations have equal signs, and you have an exponent, your goal is to get everything to one side and factor. When we cover factoring, you should have talked about it when we did solving polynomials. Anytime you have an exponent and an equal sign, get everything to one side and factor. So we're going to move the 4x to the other side. It's being subtracted, so we're going to add. We're going to move the 28 to the other side. It's positive, so I'm going to subtract it away. It's going to give me x squared, negative 8x plus 4x is negative 4x, positive 16 minus 28. Sign numbers, 28 is bigger, so it's going to keep the sign 12. Common mistake right here is to finish off and forget about that equal sign. But you have an equal sign, so you can't lose it. Just like at the beginning, you don't want to create an equal sign, so you don't want two equal signs. But you have one, so you can't just get rid of it either. Okay? So we need to keep that equal sign. 28 minus 28 was 0. Negative 4x plus 4x, so that's still 0. So it's just going to be equal to 0. Okay? So x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0. We now have everything to one side. We need to factor. I'm going to do the AC method. If you're not sure of the AC method, you can see my other videos on how to factor using the AC method. It's how to factor trinomials without doing guess and check, without all the ambiguity, without the it works sometimes this way, sometimes that way, without not knowing if it's prime or not. So AC method's a little bit more consistent. It works every single time the exact same way. AC, you multiply the coefficient of the x squared by the coefficient by itself. 1 times negative 12 is negative 12. Careful with signs. And B is the coefficient of the x, negative 4. We're then going to make a chart. You want factors of AC and the sum of the factors. I'm going to start with the number 1. I always start with number 1. That's just to keep it consistent. 1 times what number is negative 12? Negative 12. 1 plus negative 12 is negative 11. You're looking for in this last column, B. So we want negative 4. That's not negative 4. Instead of 1, I'm going to do 2. 2 and what number make negative 12? So negative 6. 2 plus negative 6, because we want the sum. Negative 4, there's your B. These two numbers are going to make a new B. Instead of using negative 4, we're going to use positive 2 minus 6. That's still negative 4, correct? So I'm going to do x squared plus 2x minus 6x minus 12. You're not changing A, you're not changing C, you're only making a new B. Don't forget your equals. Equals 0. Then we're going to factor grouping. What's your GCF? GCF is x. x squared divided by x. Positive 2x divided by x. x plus 2. Negative 6x minus 12, GCF. 6 and 12 is 6. Always take the sign of the first number in that group. So I've got a negative 6, open parentheses. Negative 6x divided by negative 6 is a positive x. Negative 12 divided by negative 6 
is a positive two. Don't lose your equal sign. Okay. Inside the parentheses should be the same. If they're not, you've done something wrong. You've either gotten the wrong numbers for B, meaning you probably weren't paying attention to the sign is where I see the most mistakes. Or you took the wrong GCF out here is the other place I see the most mistakes. People will take a three out or a two out, but they won't take the entire six out. You have to take the greatest common factor for this to work. Okay. X plus twos, they come out. And left over, you have an X and a negative six. Don't lose your equal sign. Zero factor property, we have two things multiplied together to equal zero. One or both of them must equal zero. X plus two is zero. X minus six is zero. Solve, X equals a negative two. X equals a positive six. Question so far, we are not done yet. You have answers. However, sometimes we get answers that don't work. We've done nothing wrong. All the math here, our entire thought process is correct. However, sometimes our answers just don't work. So we're going to do a check, and I'm going to move the camera over a little bit so y'all can have room to do the check. And we're just going to plug these numbers in. If I plug in x equals negative 2 to the original problem, negative 2 minus 4 equals the square root of 28 minus 4x. And just do the math. Negative 2 minus 4, that's a negative 6. Any hesitation on sign numbers, use your calculator. 28 minus 4x. You'll see all the way to the end. X is not X. X is negative 2. So 28 minus 4 times negative 2, that's 28 plus 8, which is 36. And the square root of 36 is 6. Again, we look for the principal answer, so we're going positive. Negative 6 does not equal 6. That is not an answer. Again, we did no math wrong. However, that doesn't work. It violates the domain. We need to check the other one, x equals 6, to see if 6 will work. We're going to have, from the very beginning, x minus 4, so 6 minus 4, equals the square root of 28 minus 4 times x, which is 6. 6 minus 4 is 2. 4 times 6 is 24. 2 equals 28 minus 24, square root of 4. Principal answer is 2. 2 equals 2, this is true, meaning that is correct. Did not work. Answer's wrong. Don't include it in your final answer. Came out to a true statement. It worked. That answer's correct. Be extremely careful. These problems are long. They're slightly tedious. They're not the fun thing to do. But with practice, organization, and being careful, and making sure you always check your answers. You would rather find out it's wrong while you have a chance to fix it than let me get a red pen at it on the test and then there's no chance to fix it. Okay? Or to cross it off. If both answers come out wrong, make sure you didn't make a mistake. I would take a separate sheet of paper and work the problem again to make sure there's not an arithmetic mistake, but one coming out wrong is not the end of the world. I'm going to pan the camera back over the entire problem just so y'all can see it start to finish. And then that's it.